what exactly is wrong with the wheel? I hope he hasn't gone off and welded to some secret wife in Ethiopia, has he? You misunderstand me. Your father's will is perfectly clear and valid. He has also bequeathed a substantial, I may say, a most substantial sum of money. And according to the terms of the will, the beneficiaries are all assembled in this room. I don't believe it. I beg your pardon? You? I don't quite follow. So he has gone on to will everything to you, hasn't he? Christ. All the works. How do we might see this? My father has always had his eyes on you, you pretty little thing. That? would be most improper. In such an event, I could not possibly have acted as your father's attorney. Naturally, the legacy is to be divided amongst you, his three children. Please. You mentioned some irregularities. Yes, I did. You will understand when I read the provisions of the will. Oh, come on, Miss Naturally. We don't have to sit here and wait while you read all of that. You've already made it clear that we're sharing everything. So what are we sharing? Anthony Brandt said, other things may change us, but we start and end with family. My name is Michael E. Joffo, and I am a novelist. I am also estranged from my family, especially my father, who would rather die than watch his youngest son ruin his life, coming up with stories from thin air. He wanted me to join the family and straighten the legacy that was his endless strings of companies, just like his other children. You see, I am the last of three children. There is Richard, there is Pauline, and there is me. I have always loved my father. I have always loved the man. Even though we didn't see eye to eye because of my odd choice for a career, I still love him. But I never told him. Pauline was the first to get the news. Hello? No, this is our assistant. She's currently indisposed. Oh, okay. Okay, hold on. Excuse me, ma'am. Ada. What is it? You have a call, ma'am. Can't it wait? I'm afraid not. It's important. Hello? Yes. Hey, you OK? 
Luca, you, my darling people. Look at you. Oh, why did it take you keep so long to come and see your grandfather? It's all mommy's fault. Jenny? It's all mommy's fault. She said you can't come until school is over. And I was right. Honey. Daddy. How are you? <laughs> come on, guys. Laugh something. Let's go inside. Have something goodies. So many goodies for you. Yay! Prayer time. Jennifer, you're up. Oh, Father in heaven. We bring forth this bounty you have provided for us, for your blessings. We ask that you provide for the poor and the needy. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. That was a good prayer, honey. Thanks, Grandpa. I pray too. Lovely. I know you do. <laughs> good. My darling, how about your father? I have no idea. What do you mean you have no idea, darling? Daddy, can we not talk about this now? Especially not in front of the kids. I just want to know. Daddy, I said not now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I yield. That's fine. My precious gold. Zero point seven five percent market share. Your business is practically invincible. No impact. Now let's see projections with Alan and for media. This shows at the end of year one you will be up ten percent, and at year five your business would hold seventy percent of the market share. That is total market domination, even over all your competitors. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake about it. These numbers are only possible if you work with Alan Ijo for Media. Yes? Oh, he's here already. Thanks. There goes my amazing daughter. Daddy. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. What are you working on? Um, I'm just looking at the shirt company's profile. Helen, I'm not sure you have met my smart daughter. I'm not sure I have. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I promise you, you have never met anyone smarter, Helen. Oh, I'm sure she takes after you, sir. Oh, yeah, you're right. She does take after me. Helen, this is my daughter, Pauline, the MD of the family's business. Pauline! This is Helen, the daughter of my solicitor, Gideon. She also just come home from London. The infamous Gideon Okoro. The same one. Your father is a good man. Thank you. Thank you. Helen's father is not feeling very well. That's why we have her here. She will be filling in for her father until the man gets back on his feet. Sounds good. I hope there's improvements in this condition. Oh, yes. He's getting better. He just needs enough rest. And I'm sure you will see to that. That's what inspired me to move back home, so. Awesome. How is London? London is fine. Wet as always. The rain never catches a break over there. Helen, I'll meet you outside. Yes, of course. It's really nice meeting you. You too. Nice girl. 
Oh, yeah, she is. So, Dad, what do you think about shafts? Shaft campers. I wonder who included them in the proposal. But we need as much clients as we can get. Yes, we do, but not shaft. The company whose net worth is $2 billion can pay us. Forget about shouts. Can we at least put them under consideration? It's your own decision at the end of the day. Do whatever you think is best for the company, my dear. Come on. Okay, Daddy. Daddy, um, hold on a second, let me call you back. What is he doing here? Hey. Hi. How are you doing? What are you doing here? I just asked how you're doing. Could you at least respond to that? No. What are you doing here? I'm actually here to see the kids. I've not seen them in a while. It was intentional. Yeah. I know. And that's why I'm here. To do what? See the kids. How did you even get in here? I used to live here, Pauline. Have you forgotten? Until you cheated, it is no longer your house. How did you get in here? I have a key. Ah, I see. Time to change the locks. Pauline! I don't have time for this, Christopher. I only came back home to get a file for my daddy. And the truth is, you can't see the kids. Not right now. So I suggest you stop bothering yourself so much. Pauline! Pauline! You're still here. Pauline, I just want to see the kids. Pauline. I know you're just doing all this because of your dad. But I promise you it won't always be like this. Pauline, darling, I think you have worked enough. Daddy, I'm just trying to finish up this account tonight. It's late. I know the kids need their mother. The kids are fine. My nanny is staying over for the night. Well, I wouldn't want them to wake up to a nanny. I would want them to wake up to you. Come on, darling. Okay, daddy. <laughs> That's my girl. Have you taken your vitamins? Come off, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh no, let's go get it now. What? Come on, daddy, let's go. All I'm asking is for you to let me see my kids. And I am telling you, that is not possible. Could you please tell me why that is? 
No reason. You just can't see them. I just can't see them. No, you can't. It's the audacity for me that you would walk into my father's house with this nonsense. Pauline, you're playing with fire. Christopher, again with the empty threats, really? You really should watch your mouth now. Or what? What would you do? Need I remind you that you are standing in the middle of my father's sitting room? A man who will get you arrested if you tried anything stupid. Of course. That is girl. That's all you've lived by. Daddy this, daddy that, daddy daddy. Yeah, daddy daddy daddy. He's my everything. How is that your concern? It doesn't concern me. It really doesn't. What concerns me right now is what I'm asking you for. And that is to see my kids. Over my dead body, you will never have access to those children. You really need to be careful now. What will you do? You are spineless. Don't you dare. Don't you even think about it. It is time to go. But I was only trying we to... We are going to hit my daughter right inside my own house. You still think it is wise for you to say another word. Use the door. Sheba, no kwe po yi lo. Come here, my little one. It's okay. My precious girl. It's okay. Ebezna. He's not the only man. Worry for you have me. Do, do, Ebezna. Come and eat your chant. Ebezna, oh. Let me have my phone, please. Okay. Richard got the news next. Pauline called him. some privacy like the rest of other people. Huh? I'm on holidays. I, at least I deserve to. Tell me you wanted to see me. What are you doing? Wrong office. Let me introduce you to my daughter, Pauline. What are you 
you thinking? Huh? Oh, shut your trap! What do you know? What the hell were you thinking bringing that woman into this establishment? Daddy, calm down. Do you realize what an embarrassment that moment was? Shut up, you worthless bastard! What exactly is your problem? If you don't want to walk here, say so! And stop embarrassing yourself. You can join your writer brother and be worthless. And do not bring that shit into my company. Anymore! Never! A blow job in the office. Really? Have some decency, Richard. Have you been speaking to Michael? Not really, no. He doesn't want to talk to anyone. Hmm. What about you? You talk to him? Well, I try. <laughs> I mean, I, I try to always check on him every now and then. Is he OK? Kid Burr is just fine, as a matter of fact. His third novel will be out next week. Really? Sounds great. <laughs> I'm actually happy for him. <laughs> Me too. So what do you think? Do we talk to Dad about him? Those two have a really battered relationship. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think about the new lawyer? White chick? Yes, Helene. What do I care? I mean, an old boy could be fucking her. <laughs> Don't talk about dad like that. <laughs> it's okay. My bad. My bad. Okay? You know, if you weren't his daughter, he would marry you, right? Richard, stop it. It's okay. It's all right. Sorry. I think she's the one in charge of Dad's will now. It's always been about the money for you, Pauline. I knew it. Yes. I mean, for all you care, old boy could be dead right now. What makes you think all these disgusting things you say are funny? Come on. That's just the plain truth, Pauline. What? Hmm? You don't like to be told the truth? Huh? You are disgusting. Where are you going? Come on, Pauline, come back. Come on.
Hi, Dad. Richard. Come on in. Dad, I... I was wondering if I could talk to you for a minute. Sit down. What do you need? Um, um. What is your problem, Richard? It's nothing, Dad. Then talk. Have you spoken to Michael lately? What for? And why do you ask? Dad, Michael is releasing his book next week. It's his third novel. Ah, good for him. So, so uh, have you spoken to him? I haven't talked to that boy. Since your mother died, three years ago. Okay. They enter. They go, they go, they go, they go. They go, they, if, if you hear why, get push, give me a shot, roll up. They go, it's okay, okay? it's okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, Gary Chi. Uh -huh. Gary Chi. Welcome, sir. No, Gary Chi, it is a good thing. Go do it again. Nah, eh, go do it again, Gary Chi. You are looking sweet. Let go do it again. Ha, Chi, let go, Gary Chi, Balenciaga. Oh, Gary Chi. Welcome, boss. Where are you on? Look at shoes, look at Balenciaga. It's okay. You're not shining like this. Fuck you. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to My brother did. Your brother is around. Oh no, your brother did now. Your brother did. Your brother, even if you know that, go make a meeting. Then I'm going to forget it now. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, I'm going to tell you. God bless you, sir. I'm going to tell you. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Hey. <laughs> Kid bro. How far now? I did. Oh. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Make yourself comfortable. <clears throat> Whiskey, have you? Yes. Knock yourself out. Thanks. So, uh, Mr. Reiter, how come you're watching sports instead of writing? <laughs> well, these days I do every other thing except writing. It's like that sometimes, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. You didn't tell me you were coming. So if I tell me, say you know the, <laughs> not be you again. This I don't know you. <laughs> but look, on a more serious note, you need to start creating time for your family. Eh? Huh? You don't even talk to Pauline and the kids anymore. Just a couple of days ago, Dad told me that you haven't even spoken to him ever since Mom died. Like, what's going on? Big bro. You know how I feel each time you raise this topic. I shouldn't bring this now. 
but why? Hey, Michael, look. Even if you don't want to talk to Pauline, it's not my business. That one thinks she's one, a part of one uh, royal family in her head. But you need to make peace with your father. Can you do me a favor? Sure. Finish your drink, please. I saw Michael earlier today. Good for you. He was looking really Richard. well. Not now. Why do you say that? The kids are here. Going. The last time I saw my father was five years ago after my mother's funeral. And I got the message next. Hey, Dad. Son. How are you holding up? Fine. Good. You know, we all miss her. I want to talk to you about something, Michael. You see, your mother always wanted to make you happy. But one thing you do not realize was that she also wanted the best for you. Dad, where are you going with this? Your mother will never make a fuse about your choice for a career because she wanted the best for you and she wanted to make you happy. No, 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 Dad. You are wrong. Mother liked me as a writer. That is what she made you believe, son. 
That's what she made you believe. You were only changing seas. You hardly know the concept of life yet. What do you think your yearly income will be as a writer? You don't need to answer that now. We both know it amounts to nothing. Think about what your life would be if you join your brother and your sister to work for me, for the company or the family. Dad. To keep the legs going. Dad, please. Please. Writing is the path I have chosen for myself. I'm only trying to honor your mother. Because she will also want you to work for the family. Dad, she supported my dream of being a writer. To make you happy. Don't you get it? Listen. You don't have to rush your decision. Take your time. Think about it. I mean, we just buried your mother. Great. The girls are leaving. You should come and say goodbye. And this? Yes, sir. Come on in. Hey, Dad. Hey, Michael. Come on and sit down. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Hey, we're done here? Yes, sir. Good. It's been two weeks since we had a talk about your future, Michael. Yes, Dad. And I'm sure you've given all I told you a good thought. Dad. There is nothing to think about. Dad, huh? writing is my future. What is wrong with you, Michael? Do you want to ruin your life? Dad, Dad. I'm trying to make a life for you and the family and you're hell-bent on writing this garbage. What the hell is wrong with you? from earlier was from my sister Pauline. My father was found dead in his office. Heart attack. And now I have to be at the funeral.
Of all three children, Pauline was the closest to our late father. But it didn't mean she cared for the man any more than we did. Pauline had always cared about the cash. Hey, Richard. Hey, Mike. Oh, no, Pauline. You're not mad at me now, are you? He was your father. He was our father. You could have showed up to his funeral at the very least. I was busy. Mike, you know this, right? Busy doing what? You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, no, Polly. You don't go on like that insulting me. You don't do that. Because you will not like old comfort. What will you do? What will your shameless self do? Wow. She wants to fight me. <laughs> Can we, but let's please stop this. Oh, yes. The very person in the world that I want to see right now. <laughs> Cute Helen. How are you? I'm doing okay. Thanks. Helen was my father's lawyer. She took over from her father. After her dad, an old friend and my dad's lawyer died. I'm so sorry for your loss. Oh, come on, don't be. Old boy deserves to kick the bucket. Yeah, I mean, he's already... Richard! Why are you so shameless? What did I do? Did I say something wrong? Well, good morning, all. Good morning. It is... An odd wheel. It is, in fact, a most unusual wheel. What do you mean, odd? It has its unexpected aspects. What do you mean, unexpected? Well, there are certain irregularities. Irregularities. Are you saying our father's will is not legal? No, no, certainly not. Your father's will is clear and valid. It also involves a substantial sum. Your father was an extremely prudent man. I know, he was an angel. Quite so, quite. <laughs> So what exactly is wrong with the wheel? I hope he hasn't gone off and willed it to some secret wife in Ethiopia, has he? You misunderstand me. Your father's will is perfectly clear and valid. He has also bequeathed a substantial, I may say, a most substantial sum of money. And according to the terms of the will, the beneficiaries are all assembled in this room. I don't believe it. I beg your pardon? You? I don't quite follow. So he has gone on to will everything to you, hasn't he? Christ, all the works. How do we might see this? My father has always had his eyes on you, you pretty little thing. That would be most improper. In such an event, I could not possibly have acted as your father's attorney. Naturally, the legacy is to be divided amongst you, his three children. Please. You mentioned some irregularities. Yes, I did. 
You will understand when I read the provisions of the will. Oh, come on, Miss Naturally. We don't have to sit here and wait while you read all of that. You've already made it clear that we're sharing everything. So what are we sharing? I mean, what exactly are we sharing? And that right there is the whole point. You see, despite your father's will, the amount that accrues to each of you is still yet, even now, unsettled. It has to be decided amongst yourselves. I have separately lodged with my solicitors a sealed document, hereafter known as the document, the contents of which are unknown even to them, in which I have expressed my wishes regarding the distribution of my wealth between my three, three children. children. I have always considered myself an honest man, and where should a man be more honest than in debt? I have thus felt it necessary in this document to discriminate between my children, deeming it only proper to leave a larger sum to one than the other. This discharges my duty to, to myself. myself. It does not, however, entirely discharge my duty towards them. As fruit of my loins, they are each entitled equally to equal share of their patrimony. My own prejudice in favor of one or more should not in justice deprive them of, of their, their biological, biological inheritance. inheritance. In recognition of this, this fact, I therefore desire that they be closed together in complete privacy for a period of one hour, precisely immediately following the reading of this will. I desire that they shall have no contact during the time with any other person. During that time, they shall be required to decide whether to divide my estate between them in three equal biological shares, or whether to accept the provision of the said document, knowing its provision to be inequitable. At the end of the hour, they shall record their decision by simple, simple majority, majority vote. vote. Should they, they choose, choose to, to take, take equal, equal shares, shares, the document is to be burned immediately in the presence of them all, on red, to, to forestall subsequent, subsequent bitterness. However, should they elect to accept the provisions of the said document, they will have the satisfaction or otherwise of knowing that they themselves were, were responsible, responsible for, for their, their choice. choice. In the unlikely event that they should be incapable of decision by the end of the time allotted, I bequeath my entire estate to the Margaret Memorial Foundation. At that moment, I didn't know what to say. That sneaky old devil. Who would have thought he had it in him? Let us synchronize. It's precisely 10.33. Madam, gentlemen, you have exactly one hour. No contacts.
Well, I'm afraid I shall also be obliged to lock the door. I hope you understand. Excuse me. Yes? What if I need to use the loo? Richard! Sorry, oh, I... No, you don't have to worry about that. It was just, you know, one of the questions. In that case... one of those characters in your bloody novel. <laughs> well, it's not like I've read any, of course, but still. I've read all of them. They're all very good. But that was a lie. Pauline had only read one of my novels, and she thought it was obscene. For Pauline and Richard to discover themselves as allies was inconceivable. That wasn't an intellectual assessment, simply an instinctive one. A writer tends to find himself relying increasingly on his instinct and distrusting his intellect. To be perfectly honest now, in retrospect, I was merely waiting for them to clash, trusting to tension to excite my emotions and deliver me of a verdict. It had nothing to do with reason. In those first few minutes, I had no idea at all as to which way I would vote. Richard started it. Of course, Richard started it. So, what are we supposed to be doing while Miss Pretty Hills walks right back in? I suppose we ought to discuss it. Discuss what? There are no questions. There's absolutely nothing to discuss. You're right. There's no question about that. I'm even surprised that he considered it. Of course, it was an awkward old cove. It was always fucking aggravating at times. Come on, Polly. Admit it. Well... Just now and then. There were occasions. Of course there were occasions. I mean, it happens to all of us. Just a cantankerous old so-and-so. The old schemer. I'm sure he pretty much knows what he was up to while was putting this together just to stir us up. I think we all deserve equal shares. What did you just say, Richard? That we all deserve equal shares. You failed. What? I see it all now. I, I don't understand. I understand it completely. For Christ's sakes, Mike. What is she on about? Of course, there was no way they could last long without a fight. Honestly, love Don't has... love me. Don't you dare. Animal. Please. The put of you should stop this. We are not going to get anywhere with this. This is an issue we should discuss more sensibly. It's no good getting excited like this. Mike is right. So what should we do then? Let's look at this objectively. So Daddy makes a will in which he gives us what he wants, exactly how he wants it. He calls this the document. And then he feels guilty for distinguishing amongst his children 
as any loving father would. So he gives us a choice to either accept or to reject his wishes. We must accept the document. If we reject it, we reject that. <laughs> He was such a loving man. <laughs> so you think we should open the document? He was so loving, Mike. He loved you. He was so proud of you. He loved your writings and everything. I think he would want you to back me up right now. That's a bit presumptuous. Isn't it? I, I feel better. Mike. Enough of this bullshit. Now let's get down to it. I'm sorry if this is an appeal to your rationality, Polly, old girl. But let's face the facts. Nobody in this room, not even you, not me, not Mike, gives two fucks if that old boy's dead. How dare you? Come off it, Polly. You probably knocked him off so you can have his money. How could you? How could you? After everything I did for him? Richard, please, stay here. No, 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 brother. Please, I'm sorry. But someone needs to put away this charade, this whole hypocrisy out of this little wake. Come on. Mike, you know her too well. She's always bullying that old boy. Always shoving him around like he's some pussy. The old man didn't even have a moment to call his own. And it wasn't even like she was doing it for some something sentimental, like filial feelings. She just wanted to make sure she had her claws close to the cash. You swine. You've always been a swine and that's what you are. You got the nerve lecturing me about daddy. I loved him. But what would you know about that? What did you ever do for him? Except gallivant all over Africa, from one filthy life to the other. You disgusted him. Daddy paid for your guilty pleasures just because he was a loving man. But I know you disgusted him. Come on, Polly. <laughs> Nobody is talking about my morals right now. We're talking hard, raw. Cash. And I want my share. Okay? Fine. I might sound all greedy and an ungrateful bastard. But nobody, not even you, can be as honest as I am. At least we all know where I stand. Maybe I liked the old boy, but he's dead now, right? And since we all know where I stand, it might be a soggy ground, but I'm not pretending it's anything else. You should be ashamed of yourself to even consider accepting his money after everything you did. You sent our father to an early grave, asshole. Early? <laughs> Gracious Christ. The man was 76, 76. He was good for another 10 years until you wore him down. Mike, will you stand for this? Of course. Uh, Mike, well, Mike, come on, you know the truth, isn't it? Oh. 
I do not think it is wise for us to get all worked up by this. We, we seriously do not have time on our side. If we continue to be here like this, we will definitely get nowhere. There you go. That's all we need. Dead luck. <laughs> Funny. Stand by, Margaret Memorial. I was tempted to leave it at that, to have it go to Margaret Memorial. It would have been a classic case of poetic justice. I hate to admit this, but there is a part of me that shies away from scenes like this. A writer has to be a detached observer of human behavior, and yet the very nature of his art demands involvement. He needs to play a part, a part. And it can be particularly painful when, as also often happens, you can see both sides of an argument. Here is the deal. Pauline wanted to open the document because she believed that Dad had left her the bigger part of his wealth. And Richard didn't want this because he knew more than anyone how distant he had been from Dad. You're well trained for this, Mike. Hmm? Playing God, I mean. Polly is for opening the document. I'm for fair share. You have the deciding vote. How does it feel? I mean, like writing one of your novels? It must feel great deciding destinies. Power without responsibilities. Like God. We owe it to him, Mike. Daddy loved all of us. He loved you, you know this. We have to trust him. We should trust him. You're not buying that garbage, Mike. I mean, for all we know, he might have willed the entire money to her and would have our backs up in the IDP camps. But this way, we know what we're getting. Fair is fair, equal share. For all I know, that old wag must have some silly moves up his sleeves. What if there's somewhere in the documents that states that since we're not treating each other equally, that he just might will the entire money to some old lady in a quiet room? Hmm? Look at her face. So much for Polly's noble loyalty. <laughs> I trust him. Besides, the will clearly states that the money should be shared between us. We had less than 10 minutes to go. I had to decide. Even then, I didn't know how I would vote. The silence grew on us and the clock kept Ticking. Tick tock. Tick tock. One minute to go, Mike. Please, Mike. This is the last thing we can do for Daddy. Come on, Mike. You have to cast your vote. It's now or never. You're not going to let Margaret Memorial have a way, are you? No. I will not do that. Mike.
I'm sorry. Richard, I would have to vote with Pauline. You bastard. Time's up. Didn't you? It's two against one for opening the document. Okay. So here we go again. So you decided to open the, the document, document as, as I, I knew, knew you, you would. would all along. Does that surprise you? I knew exactly how you would each choose. I knew too exactly why you would choose as you did. How predictable you all are. Proud Pauline. Richard, with your insatiable greed. And you, Michael, you, most of all, so predictable. I have always attempted to be a good father to you all. And as a good father, I shall do my best to accommodate you all. You, Pauline, chose as you did because you wanted more than anyone else. So be it. To you, I bequeath half of my estate plus 15 billion naira. To Richard, who wanted more than he expected to get, I leave the residue, one billion naira and a fraction of my estate. My solicitors will handle that part. That's a bit more than you expected, isn't it, Richard? Which leaves my care you chose for curiosity. I knew that you could never resist the promise of this document. You thought it might be amusing to know exactly what I thought of you all. So I grant you your desire. You are always my favorite, Michael. I loved you more than anything, and yet you never loved me even as much as the others. In their different ways, Pauline and Richard both loved me. Michael, but you can probably never understand this. There is a splinter of ice in your soul, my son, that masquerades as warmth and makes you what you are and always came between us to you i can only bequeath my hope i can visualize you now leaning back calmly smiling observing recording your own emotions but can i make you react can i make you care hit me even if you can it would at least be something. It might even make you a reasonable writer.
they had served their purpose. Minor characters who were no longer of any consequence. I never hated my father. Hate is sometimes a camouflage for love. That was what he saw. I left my siblings there and I walked home alone to my computer. I have a new novel to finish. <laughs>